Hi there, I am the CRM Ninja, and on today's episode of the Oof Sector, I have the wonderful Mike Hartley. Welcome to the show, Mike. Hi, EY. Great to see you, and thanks for having me. It's wonderful to have you on. It's been such a time since we last managed to catch up. Yeah, 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 with COVID and everything else, it's interfered with so much, and I'm loving loving the wallpaper backdop. Um, ah, yes, I my, am, my little, my little friend. It yes so yes fine. there's there's a reason why i have a picture of a deer or a stag here um some viewers may be familiar with the concept but perhaps you'd like to explain why i put a background of a deer so yes so my name my name's mike hartley and um uh, i go by the oh, what's the personal brand um, which some people will be groaning at when they hear those words uh, of heart of the Midlands spelt H-A-R-T. Can't get my own spelling out um, because a heart is actually an old English word for a mature stag that typically tends to have 10 points or more um, to show its age. Um, and there's um, Hearn the Hunter uh, is an old yeah. English folklore legend. He wore the antlers of a heart on his head. Um, and you've got wherever you go in rural England or whatever, you'll find a white heart pub somewhere. Obviously, if you're a football fan, Tottenham Hotspur, White Hart Lane, um, and all that lot. Um, but I live in Rugby, which, for those who don't know England, is pretty much slap bang in the middle of the Midlands. So, heart of the Midlands just work nicely together. It does. I always, when, when you came out with it, and I know you're thinking about it, you came out with the blog and stuff, I, I thought it was a great personal brand to have. Oh, thank you. Does part. Yeah. And, and dear, of course, uh, are very cute at times, if you don't get too oh, close. Yeah. <laughs> definitely not to a stag with 10 points or more, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You you might find yourself hoisted in the air at a very irate stag. So uh, apart from obviously being into deer and, and stags and stuff, what I would like to mentioned before we get on to whatever you're going to show for the fact is you recently launched a new podcast series which is very interesting so could you tell us a bit more about the podcast series so yeah um i i had the idea a while ago of uh doing a podcast um covering topics that basically are things that tend to have stigma don't get picked up on don't get talked about really and um the idea kind of sat in the back of my mind and I knew I wanted to co-host so I approached the ever wonderful Alison Mulligan um to kind of be a partner in the podcast and um she's the one who came up with the name the things we don't talk about and what we do is we get people together and we just talk about all those things. Um, I'm very open about mental health yeah. issues and struggles. Um, and we started talking about it more and we thought there were things um, at the time we started talking about it. And this is how, how long it's taken to get to market as it were. Um, you'd got George, Floyd was kicking off all the all the protests and marches and uproar, um, rightly so. And it was just like, well, we don't really talk about race, um, particularly within our industry, sort of the Microsofty techie world. We don't really talk about race gender diversity i know there's the great things like women in tech um and you've got immensely brilliant people like donna sakar 
um, who we were so pleased we we managed um, to arrange for her to be our guest on our first two episodes. I'm actually um, quite envious uh, of that. I say <laughs> I'm not going to say any more about that. I'm, I'm envious that you managed to get it, Rod. Yeah, um, I think it was a topic I spoke to her at Ignite London last year and as soon as I said that I was looking at doing this podcast looking at mental health racial diversity gender inequality accessibility um, disability or religion alcoholism addiction health wellness well-being all, all those things that we that that image of the geek in a darkened closet somewhere, which yeah, okay, I'm I'm kind of living the geek dream here, but so, um, so am I here. You can't see it, but so am I. <laughs> yeah, but they're they're subjects we don't talk about. They're not associated with us, but they need to be. Um, they need to be talked about. And as soon as I spoke to her at Ignite, and this is before I'd even spoken to Alison, Donna was like if you don't invite me on, I will invite myself on because I want to talk about this stuff. Um, so actually, I mean, the way it worked out, schedules just clicked. Um, and we've got a few recorded. We've had the first two episodes yeah. with Donna come out, plus one, where it's just me and Alison talking about it. And... We've got some more recorded and some more lined up. We've got some really good topics. And what's been really quite touching for me and what's made me realise how important it is, is just the comments I've had, people messaging me privately on Twitter, WhatsApp, whatever, just going, thank you, or that's me or wow that really touched a nerve um and it's feeding into other conversations and as we move through we'll start to delve deeper into some of the topics as well and um we're going to have some episodes where it'll be round table discussions talking nice. about topics as well as just us with one person so it's really exciting it's really really i i'm massively passionate about it because th there's just too much stigma and the, the, there's too much stuff that in this day and age i look at my kids and i think i don't want you in 20 years time to be having the same hushed conversations that I've been having I want you to be able to be open about yeah you know what heck I need a mental health day I'm struggling or you know what I think our workplace is absolutely brilliant because we've got great racial diversity we've got great religious diversity we've got a brilliant gender balance all the way from the top down it's just this wonderful mix and um, that the only way we're going to get that is by us having conversations so changing the things we don't talk about into conversations that we can talk about Definitely. so there you go a long-winded way of saying we've launched a new podcast folks as is everybody it's, it's, in it's a great one i've i've seen i've listened to the first two episodes I'm, i can't wait to hear the rest of them that come out so it's having very good people if you haven't yet gone to take a look at it feel free to go take a look it's on mike's website heart of the midlands it's also i believe on spotify oh it's on it's on anywhere you can you can even ask your smart device which i can't name because i've got <laughs> two of the biggies in the room with me but you can listen on them you can watch on youtube um Wonderful. and yeah um twdta.com things we don't talk about twdta yeah make sure i get It'll that go. right yeah that's um, fine go check it out so yeah from launching a new podcast to the oops factor what do you have to share with us 
Um, I think uh, for me, for me, my my biggest oops professionally goes back. Oh, far too long to remember. Actually, um, <laughs> it, it it was Microsoft, but before business applications existed as a thing. Um, Got it. And um, it it's it's kind of in some ways full circling because I'm seeing people I know and respect making similar sort of mistakes. Um, and at one job I was at very early in my career, I was a programmer. Um, okay. Yes, an actual pro coder. Um, I could never do that job these days, trust me. I've, I've forgotten more than I could ever remember. Um, I, I think I might be able to do Hello World now, and that'd be about me. Oh, I remember um, that. Uh... Yeah. But, um, but yeah, we had a client who, very, very big client, and they had their person in charge. Okay. was particularly obnoxious let's just <laughs> let, let, let's just say it very politely very very obnoxious gentleman and um he would come in like a bull in a china shop wow um but um my boss and a senior colleague uh they were on a customer site for the day and he called up insisting that something needed changing. Was he a technical person by any chance? Oh, oh, he liked to claim he was. Oh, OK. So he claimed he was technical. Okay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So he, 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 he was that important. He could claim he was technical. Um, but he insisted that the change had to be made in live. In production. Oh, yes. Now, when we say the word production here, we're talking about a factory that churned out millions of pounds worth of product a day. Okay. Okay. So small little so, enterprise. Well, yeah. Yeah. And so when we say production, we genuinely actually do mean production because the code that we wrote controlled all of the machinery in the factory because we ah. programmed what are some some of you as may have heard of SCADA systems um which basically they control all the robots all the machines everything in factories so anyway i i thought okay it's a fairly simple change go in um I can't say no to him because I've got no authority and I've been told you've got to keep this guy happy. Uh, so um, I went in, I made this change. I came back out. Got no way of testing it because we're on production. Were you actually in person at the factory? Oh, no, no, or no, no. I was, was I was remote. So th okay. th this was all done over dial up as well. Oh, the wonderful and, speeds of a 56k um, modem. Yeah, and then about half hour later, I had one of the directors come storming in going, what the have you just done? The whole of the factory's gone down. Like, wow. Sorry, what? Sorry, you what now? Excuse me, what? Me? seeing my career in IT suddenly coming crashing down and thinking, yeah, I'm going to become a road sweeper um, because that's clearly what I'm skilled enough to do, hopefully. Um, maybe not. You never know. I, I don't know. My broom handling skills might be questionable. And it took several hours to find the problem. Several hours, hours, yeah. And this is in the good old days of things like Visual Basic and stuff when Visual Basic was actually a valid business coding language. 
However, the code I was writing wasn't BB. It was a specialist language. And it was one that I'd only been learning for a few months. And in the end, it turned out to be that age old enemy that many, many coders will recognize and many people dealing with the low code platform will recognize or writing SQL, a missing semicolon at the end of a line. Oh In terms of lost production, they were looking at about four million pounds worth of lost production because wow. of the downtime. Um, and what's um, that in the change statement? The change that you made, was it that you were left off a semicolon in there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. There was a semicolon missing off the end. And because of that, it caused it to crash. to crash. And because you're on a production line, one thing goes, it knocks the whole thing down and the factory dominoes. grinds to a halt. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, and... The reason I say I see that coming round more now is because we've got the wonderful low code platform where semicolons and things like that are becoming quite key and critical again. Yeah. And I'm also seeing a lot of people saying we're being told we've got to make this change in production. And every time I see somebody saying things like that and, oh, we've got the client phoning us up and telling us we've got to do this in production, I just cringe inwardly. And every time I get told I have to make a change in production and much as we might hate it, we've all probably had to do it at some point and probably will have to do it again because sometimes... Our clients will not listen. We all know that. Um, she didn't say that, honest. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's just that thing that friends don't let friends make changes in production. Brilliant. Don't but, do but, it, people! But, but do you know what the answer nowadays is to that when clients turn around and say it? Two words. Oh, they, there's there's lots of possible responses. Go on. What are your two words? Managed solutions. Ah, uh, no, no. Oh, I'm not going in that debate. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> stepping into that one. No, I I, I was more Re thinking, regardless um, re regardless of whether it's actually managed and not in production. That we we will turn around and say it's a managed solution. We have to deploy it properly. It needs to be done in the environments yeah. and cascade through. Uh, and they can't default that because we say this is Microsoft best practice, which of course we follow as a Microsoft partner. Um, and they can't really argue with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love your idea of Nirvana, EY. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I did caveat this with saying, regardless of whether it is actually managed or not. Normally yes. what happens is, is we have an emergency change request come in and we do it and we get people to authorize the deployment of it through. Um, if it is a managed solution, if it's not, then we just get it. Of course, to, we, we quickly test it out in the bit of time that it saves, but it's what we sort of go, best practice. We told you we work according to best practice and uh, we, we, we kind of yeah. do this. Yeah, You're going to have to no, wait three hours for us to push it through. No, the normal words I hear when you uh, hear things like that are support costs. They will go up. We do this, your support bill goes up. Yeah, um, that's true. But um, but yeah, it's um, but, but, it's one. That's but from the look of it, for... by by the look of it, you've recovered. You've taken semicolons along the way with you, when you are still in IT. I yeah, my my career survived through many iterations. I do get a nervous tick every now and then when I think about it, or. Or if I happen to drive past one of their factories and I look and I go, oh, yes, I know exactly what goes on inside of you. <laughs> um, although it, it, the, the great thing about, about working in that sort of sector with SCADA systems and, I mean, I work with clients from everything from cars 
to chocolate bars and mm, pretty much bars. everything in between. So it was great being able to walk down the street and you'd have certain brands of cars go scooting by and you'd go, yeah, okay, you're this year's model. Hmm. Yeah, I helped write the uh, code that did that part of that car. Hmm. That's a bit of me there. Or you'd walk in the supermarkets and you'd be like, me, 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 me. Awesome. Awesome. And you also got to very quickly learn all the secrets of which are genuinely store brand genuine articles. That, that, oh, that was let's, always, let's that, 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 that was that was always the um, I mean, that knowledge is so far out of date now. I think most of the companies have disappeared, but uh, that was always the good one. When you when you got the hidden list of company X also makes the store own brand products for these yeah. supermarkets, it was brilliant. Yeah. It was brilliant. You could save quite a bit, and you also tended to get access to staff shops. So it was very helpful. Site visits were always good. Always can good. imagine chocolate, chocolate coming home. Well, chocolate, biscuits, drinks, whatever we could lay our hands on, we came back with. <laughs> but it's glad to know that you are still going on in IT and doing marvelous things like the podcast. And really appreciate you coming on the show. No, thanks for having me. It's been great. It's been, it's been wonderful. lovely speaking to you. Nice to see your face and that magnificent uh, stag behind you, which it's, is a it, it is a heart. It would count as a heart. So uh, it would indeed. So indeed. well That's... done. I applaud you for getting that one uh, spot on there. <laughs> Thank you. It's been great to have you on the show, viewers. We hope that you've enjoyed it. You will remember the importance of semicolons as you go through things. Check out Mike's podcast, The Things That We Don't Talk About. Feel free to check out the rest of the Oops Factor playlist, subscribe to the channel, take a look at the blog. And if you would like to come on and share your own story, feel free, hit the link in the description, drop your details, and I'll reach out and have you on the show. But above all, have a great day.